Well, I was interested in becoming a historian uh, when I was a young boy. I was, uh, my mom and dad were high school teachers, so we would take family vacations across the country. And instead of going to SeaWorld and um, Disneyland, we would visit historic sites. So by the time I turned 15, I had visited Jefferson's Monticello or Truman's Independence. Um, got to read The Grapes of Wrath and then visit Steinbeck's home in Salinas. I was able to go to read Willa Cather and, and go to Red Cloud, Nebraska. So I think living on the road for family vacations, three months in a trailer, got me very interested in American history. I also became quite enamored with American folk figures. Jesse James, Billy the Kid, Johnny Appleseed, Paul Bunyan, you know, Pecos Bill, myth and reality in America. So I, when I started my undergraduate degree at Ohio State, I knew I wanted to be either a folklorist or a um, historian. And uh, eventually I did my undergrad in history. And I became a, a diplomatic historian uh, by training, Cold War diplomatic history um, at Georgetown University. That's really because I became a teacher's assistant to the diplomatic historian. And um, I wrote my dissertation on Dean Acheson, which I later made and turned into a book for Yale University Press. But now I really do a lot with the mixture of foreign policy and American politics. So I'm a diplomatic and political historian. Uh, but you know, one of the things that I'm trying to do in my own career now is trying to shake some of the labels we get pigeonholed as having to be something as historians. And um, I'm looking now to try to at least widen it to the self. I would consider myself a 20th century American historian. And um, there's a great deal of value, for example, right, looking at, as I've done, I direct the Eisenhower Center, I've written on Atchison and Dwight Eisenhower and Khrushchev and, you know, the 50s, but I also want to write on the Civil Rights Movement of the 1950s, I want to write on the Beat Generation, you know, I want to kind of look at things from more of an American Studies approach, now you look at the 20s or 30s or 40s, what went on in a particular era and why those things went on, so all the time I'm trying to expand out of my box of being a diplomatic political historian in trying to understand, at least during the Cold War period, some of the cultural and social, um, you know, waves and, and uh, movements of that period.